In the last screencast, we looked at how we could use behaviour as principles to explain the development of phobias and the maintenance of phobias. On this screencast, we're going to use the same principle, so operant and classical conditioning, um, but this time we're going to look at how we can use them to treat phobias. There are two treatments which stem from the behaviour as principles for treating phobias. The first one is systematic desensitisation and the second one is flooding and you need to know sort of step by step how each of these would be carried out. Systematic desensitisation then is quite a slow treatment for a phobia and works on a step by step basis. So first of all, um, an individual who wanted to be treated for a phobia would be taught re or would be given relaxation training. So this could be um, learning breathing techniques, muscle relaxation techniques, anything that's going to help them stay calm when they're under stress. Secondly, the individual and the therapist would sit down together and create what's known as a hierarchy of fears. Now, a hierarchy of fears would start with um, something which causes a little bit of distress, sort of the minimal amount of distress at the bottom. And then the individual would um, think about all the different situations they could be in, which would lead to the most frightening stimulus being at the top of that pyramid. After this, um, the therapist and the individual would work together and the individual would be gradually exposed to each of their fears. So they would start with the one that was at the bottom of the hierarchy. Um, if we were to use a spider phobia um, as an example, at the bottom of the hierarchy we might have a picture of a, of a spider um, and it could be that the individual first spends time um, being exposed to a picture of the spider and using the relaxation training that they um, learned earlier in the therapy in order to keep themselves calm at that level. Once they're calm at that level, then they can move on to the next step in the hierarchy. So the next step might be um, to be in the same room as a spider um, that's in a cage in a glass tank on the opposite side of the room. Now the key um, aspect of systematic desensitisation is that the client is in control throughout the whole thing. So if they're feeling worried at one particular stage of the hierarchy, maybe the, the distress has become too much, then they can choose to move back to the previous level. And they can move on to the next level of the hierarchy um, when they feel that they're ready to do so. So this is quite a slow therapy, um, it could take months, um, it may even take years for someone to um, become really, really comfortable at the very top of their hierarchy, depending on how serious that phobia is. Flooding is a far more intense and far quicker treatment. Like systematic desensitisation, it does start with relaxation training, but that tends to be where the similarities end. It does invo involve exposure to the phobic object, but unlike systematic desensitisation, this is full and immediate exposure. So if we take our spider phobia as an example, instead of starting with a picture and working up to maybe holding a spider, uh, the individual would start by holding the spider so they would be facing the worst um, of their their fears immediately and the key aspect of this is that um, the individual who agrees to this treatment effectively has to give up their right to withdraw they, they're not allowed to leave the situation until their fear has been extinguished now in situations like this people tend to imagine that if you are frightened of something your fear will get worse and worse and worse um, and will carry on exponentially. But realistically, that can't happen. Uh, your body will run out of energy. Um, eventually, you, you realize that um, whatever object you're scared of, in this case a spider, isn't actually causing you any harm. And after a certain amount of time, that fear will fall away. So it's really important with flooding that um, the treatment is maintained and the person doesn't withdraw from the situation until that um, level of fear has actually dropped off. Now, linking this to behaviourism, so systematic desensitisation works through the principles of classical conditioning. So in this case, we are creating a new conditioned response that can't exist alongside the original conditioned response. So if we think the original conditioned response is fear, and we are replacing that fear with a feeling of relaxation. Now, fear and relaxation 
um, are mutually exclusive. So if we can make someone relax in the presence of a phobic stimulus, um, then we should be able to recondition that response so they're feeling relaxed generally rather than fearful generally around that object. Flooding, because we're um, working on the idea that um, we're refusing someone that avoidance behaviour that we talked about in the last screencast works through operant conditioning. So we don't allow someone to negatively reinforce their avoidance by leaving the situation. Um, and the reduction of anxiety once that fear is extinguished helps to reinforce the confronting behaviour. So rather than having somebody leave a situation and feel better as a result of it, we try and make them feel better as a result of staying within that situation, thus overcoming that fear. So more detail on both of those treatments are available in the pre-reading. Um, before you come into the lesson, make sure that you can explain the key steps involved in systematic desensitisation and flooding and think about compar comparing the two different treatments. So what are the similarities and differences between the two?